sitting on the fence about using Ron Seal's precision finish fence sprayer. You have come to the right place. Hi, it's Tibby Singh and in this video I'm going to be talking about Ron Seal's precision finish fence sprayer. Now when I finished installing this fence behind me which is over 30 meters I was contemplating on whether I should paint it with a brush, use a manual sprayer or electric sprayer but I opted to get this manual sprayer. So I'll be covering everything from how to set it up, how to use it, any problems you might face and how to solve them and how to clean the sprayer and also many tips and tricks along the way. And just to be clear, this isn't a paid promotion, a sponsorship or an endorsement. It is a completely independent review. So if you want to hear how I got on, make sure you keep watching to see if it does exactly what it says on the tin, or in this case, box. So this cost me £19.75, so let's open it up to see if it really does look like the image. Because you'd be surprised, it's not always the case. As you can see, it does come in a cardboard box. There's the instructions. So there's no false advertisement. It does look like the image. And my first impressions is that there's a lot of plastic. I'm not too sure if this is virgin plastic or recycled, but if you know, feel free to drop us a comment below. However, it does feel fairly robust. So I have read the instructions, which I would recommend. Um, from the sounds of it, it seems like it's pretty much plug and play. And the first thing it actually mentions is make sure it's a dry, warm day and not windy. Otherwise you'll end up spraying more than just your fence, such as the clothes on the washing line or even your neighbor's fence. Also preparation is key. So make sure you've masked off any areas you don't want spraying and cover up any plants and items that can potentially be oversprayed. I've even got some protective sheets here, which I'll slide underneath the fence to prevent paint in the path or even the grass. So with all that out of the way, it's time to set it up. So this is the spray unit. At the top here is the pump handle, which has a locking collar. And here is a pressure control switch, which allows you to switch from a narrow setting for precision and a wider setting for speed. On the side here is a pressure release valve, which is really important and I'll come on to that. At the side here, is a wand holster which helps keep the nozzle off the ground and free from dirt. At the bottom we have extended feet which help stabilise the unit but are actually there to be used as foot stands so when you're pumping the unit it doesn't move around. This is the hose which is two metres long and is very flexible and at the end we have the handle and the trigger. And finally this is the wand where hopefully all the magic happens and this screws onto the handle which is easy to do so you push that into place make sure the o-ring is fully pushed down and the collar and that can be screwed into position like so and it does say make sure all the other components are hand tight so you can double check that So another thing it states is to adjust the nozzle so it's in a vertical position. And what that does is it changes the spray pattern. So if you're painting panels that are horizontal, you'll want this in a vertical position. And if you're painting panels that are vertical, you want this in a horizontal position. My concern is that when it's in speed setting, it says to keep the nozzle in a vertical position, which I can't understand because ideally I want it in a horizontal position as my feather edge boards run vertically. Anyway, we can test this out to see if it works and if there's any issues. So all that's set up and we're ready to pour the paint into the spray unit. Now it's very important that the paint is sprayable and I'm using Ron Seal's Fence Life Plus paint, which is, so make sure you check this or you can ask Ron Seal's technical team for any advice. It also says not to use any solvent-based liquids, which could damage your unit. So with this being a water-based, you can potentially thin it down. However, it doesn't say anything about that. So I presume it should work. It also hasn't mentioned anything about mixing it, 
which probably wouldn't really change the consistency. So to remove the pump handle, you just need to make sure it's fully pressed down and rotate it anti-clockwise and that should come out like so. So on the picture here, it says pour the liquid into the tank, which makes it look so easy, but surely it can't be that easy. Hence the reason why I've got a funnel to avoid creating any mess. However, it does have a funnel design at the top. So let's just go for it and see if I can recreate that image. And a little tip for when pouring the paint in is to always pour on the opposite side of the instructions, because if the paint drips, at least all this is still visible for future. Yep, just like I thought. It's creating a real mess, so we'll go to plan B and, um, well, plan A, which was my original plan, and use the funnel. So I've cleaned it up and it is a shame that this aperture isn't bigger or it would have been great if this top bit screwed off. Anyway, we'll use the funnel. And at the side here, you'll see that there's markings from 2.5 litres to 5 litres, which is the maximum level. And the bucket I've got here is 5 litres, so it should take all of that. And as you can see, it's much easier way of doing it and much cleaner. So I've poured the paint into the tank and now we need to put the pump back in. Again, make sure it's fully pressed down and just turn clockwise. Then we're ready to pump the handle up and down to pressurise the sprayer. It says you'll hear a slight hissing noise when it is pressurised. And you can see the paint is started to flow through the pipe. It's completely filled the hose now, so I'm expecting to hear the hissing noise. So I've pumped it over 70 times and I've not heard any hissing noise. So I'm just going to try it to see if there is enough pressure in the tank. And before I do that, I'll put it onto the first setting. I'm not too sure what that noise was. I think it maybe just was a, the pressure in the system. But that is the first setting, which is um, the accuracy setting. And uh, it says it's ideal for the fiddly spaces and narrow panels. Yep, it's coming out. So the idea is to move quickly and not to keep it in one spot for too long because you can see it's, it'll start to build up and uh, start to drip. So that's on the narrow setting and it comes out pretty fast to be honest. I was expecting it to come out a little bit slower, more of a probably a, a mist. Um, but we'll put it onto the second setting because there's no fiddly bits on this panel. Um, on this feather edge fence I've done and because I want it to be a little bit wider and have a, a bit more coverage. And that seems to be trickling through. It's not giving great coverage. It's trickling through, I think it needs to be pressurised a little bit more, so I'm going to pump it up a little bit more and uh, see how that works. So I've been playing around with it and I've pumped it a few more times and I can finally hear that hissing noise. So I'll just take my mic off and put it next to the release valve so you can hear that. 
and it's on setting two so I'll just show you how that works you can see it's coming out really well And the best way is to keep it moving and not have it in one spot for too long otherwise you'll get some runs so while now what i'm going to do is put it on the first setting and what you'll notice is it'll start releasing pressure so i'll just put my mic next to this so you can hear you can hear that releasing pressure so what that means is it actually needs less pressure in the first setting which is the accuracy setting and i'll just spray a couple of panels so you can see how that works so it's good for getting inside any fiddly bits and for more detail work but as I mentioned, there's no detail work or fiddly bits on this panel, so I wouldn't really use the first setting. So when you actually put it back in to the second setting, now it wouldn't work as well, which I'll just demonstrate. That you can see it's just trickling out, similar to the first setting. So that means I need to pump it a few more times to build that pressure until I hear that hissing noise again. It's a little bit of a workout as well. There we go. Just can hear that hissing noise again now. Put my mic there. So now it should work. There we go. I've heard a lot of people having problems with this, but I'm pretty impressed so far. One thing I want to try out is actually turn this to a horizontal position, which will change the spray pattern. And I know it mentioned in the instructions to have it in the vertical position when on speed mode. So let's try it to see how it works. So I'll just clean that up so you can see. It's in a vertical position. And as I mentioned, if you're doing, if you're spraying panels that are vertical, it's best to have it in a horizontal position. And if they're horizontal, it's best to have it in a vertical position. So let's see if that works. Which means I can now go up and down if it does work. That seems to be working fine. The only thing I suggest is when you get down to the bottom, it gets a little bit awkward. So maybe it's best to have it in the vertical position so you can get right down to the bottom. But it seems to be working fine in that position as well. So after a cup of tea, I came back and I noticed the sprayer wasn't spraying too well and it just about did one feather board. So what I did was I took off the nozzle and gave it a good wash, including the filter. And after that, it seemed to be working fine. So I think the key is to keep pumping until you start hear that hissing noise. And don't be scared to use extra force because sometimes it might feel like the pump is getting a little bit stiff, but just keep going until you do hear that hissing noise. And the key to when painting 
is to keep it close and keep moving fast in an even motion. And because I'm painting feather boards, I'm slightly angling the wand so I can hit the sides of the feather board. And also it's really important to overlap your spray by at least 50%. That way you'll get the best coverage. But don't hold it too close, otherwise the paint will start running. But if you hold it too far, there'll be too much overspray. So it's just about getting that balance right. So this is what I meant about the handle feeling a little bit stiff. And it feels like the pump handle is just pushing itself back up. But you really need to use some force to get past that point. Because there's no hissing noise, so you need to just keep pumping. So sometimes I feel like it's really hard to pump. I'm literally putting my body weight behind that and it's not going down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pump handle off and clean it from the bottom. And always remember to release the air. It's really important to do that. Otherwise, if you don't, it could explode in your face. Although I can't push this fully down to take the handle off anyway, so I have to release the air. I can just do that with the water bottle I've got. Or sometimes you can just pump it to see if any dirt does come out. There we go. I'm not too sure if you can see that, but there is some little bits in there, whether that's in the paint or it's just some dried bits. And air does seem to be coming out now, so we'll put that back into the sprayer and see if that works. Make sure that's tight. Now we'll pump that up and see if that's better. It does feel a lot smoother actually. So maybe it was just a little bit of clogging at the bottom. Again, pump it up until you hear the hissing noise. So as I've been using it, I thought I'd try something different, which is to push the pump handle down and lock it in place. And it seems to work a lot better and when it comes to pumping it again, I don't get that resistance. However, if you do, it might be best to clean the pump. So I've just been spraying and I've noticed the sprayer started to splatter like this. And what that means is, and what that means is it needs topping up with paint. So you have to take the pump handle off. Now before taking the pump handle off it's really important to release the pressure. I cannot emphasize that enough because if you don't it could explode in your face and I don't want to demonstrate that. So yeah release the pressure and make sure all the air is out and then we can top it up. So when filling it after the first use, you might find it difficult to actually see the level mark because it's already had paint inside. Now a little tip is to get a light, and I've just got a headlight here, and shine it inside towards the markings. And as you do that, I'm not too sure if you can see it on the camera there, but you can make out where the level line is. And it's around about here. So now I'm going to put it to the test and see if the sprayer really is five times faster than a brush. So on this side, I'm going to paint 10 feather boards with a sprayer. And on this side, I'm going to paint 10 feather boards with a brush. And I'm going to go for a cup of tea. So on this side, I'm going to paint 10 feather boards with a sprayer. And on this side, I'm going to paint 10 feather boards with a brush.
So I've just finished putting the second coat on this fence and it's always a good idea to put at least two coats on timber. And just to give you an idea, this stretch behind me is about 22 meters, which took one hour. And to be fair, I did have someone pumping the sprayer, which definitely helped and speeded the process. And in that time, we had probably had to clean the filter about four times and used about three, five litre buckets. And now it's time for the dreaded job that everyone hates, cleaning up. So when it comes to emptying the sprayer, a lot of people might be tempted to take the pump handle out and pour it back into the bucket. However, I think that might be a messy way of doing it. I personally prefer to leave it pressurised. Take the nozzle off the end and then just pour it back into the bucket until the sprayer is completely empty. So once all the paint is out, we can remove the pump handle and always remember to release the pressure. And there's no pressure in there. So we can remove the pump handle and pour some water in there. Then we can put the pump handle back in and pressurise it again. And I can also give it a good shake to make sure all the sides are clean. I can get another empty bucket and spray that out. And you might have to do that a few times until you can see clean water coming out through the trigger. So I've flushed it out a few times, so hopefully clean water should come out of the wand. And there we go, I know all the paint's out and I know that the inside of the sprayer is clean. So the next job is to clean the wand and also the filter and nozzle which is really important because if this isn't done properly it won't work properly when you come to use it again. So I've got some water in the spray bottle. I'm just gonna spray the filter and the nozzle tip with some pressure which should clean it. So I've cleaned the hose, I've cleaned the wand, I've cleaned all the tips and the filter and you just need to remember how you've taken everything apart but if you have forgotten this is how it goes together. So you've got this jet end that has a rubber seal at the bottom which then goes into the filter. Then there's another rubber seal at the top another plastic jet end, which then goes into this nut. And that then screws on to the wand. Magic. So another little tip when it comes to cleaning the outside of the unit is to pour water in the sprayer, pressurize it, and that then can be used as a sprayer. So I didn't know what to expect first as I had heard a lot of mixed reviews. However, it has exceeded expectations and although it's more of a DIY product, it's definitely saved a lot of time. So we hope you found this video useful. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully see you soon and take care. Feels like I'm giving Ron Seal CPR. Come on, stay with us, Ronnie.